You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to the Options Playbook, the program where we break down cutting-edge option strategies and explain how you can incorporate them into your own portfolio. Whether you're looking to grow your capital with some offensive maneuvers or protect your investments with defensive plays, you can find them all in the Options Playbook. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA, and SIPC. Now, let's open the playbook and get started. Welcome to Options Playbook Radio. My name is Brian Overby. I'm the Senior Options Analyst at Ally Invest and author of The Options Playbook. All right. Well, this week I am traveling, but I am still pulling off a podcast while I'm on the road uh, performing at a conference down in Florida. Where else would you do conferences? Besides Vegas, I guess, but it would most likely be Florida would be my next pick. And with that said, I'm going to look very quickly at what we talked about last week. Uh, we looked at a covered call in Amazon last week. We taped Options Playbook Radio on the 31st of August. We are now in September. And as they always say, September is a scary month for the marketplace. Oddly enough, nobody ever knows why this is. But if you go all the way back to 1950, uh September in general has been a month that has underperformed, actually has, is the only month that has been negative going all the way back to 1950. Now, obviously, there's been up months in September and down months. It's a big sample size going all the way back that, that far in time. But bottom line is, is that for some reason, September and October continue to be some of the more volatile months in the marketplace and not necessarily bad volatility, sometimes good volatility. But uh, to me, when we're running into September and October, and we had a fairly strong marketplace going into it, we saw the VIX down around 20. When uh, we approached September, now we see the VIX up around 25, actually down a little bit today. I should let you know that we are taping Options Playbook Radio. It's Wednesday, September 7th. The markets have closed. The S&P 500 index was up a fraction today. Uh, but Amazon stock was flat. And basically, since we've taped the show, Amazon stock is up approximately $2. So uh, the concept of selling a covered call or buying a collar around Amazon kind of made sense. So far, so good. Uh, only went out a short period of time. And it's more one of those strategies where you would do a rinse and repeat. Bottom line is that if after we did the show on that Wednesday, Amazon actually made a fairly decent move down in the downside. It ended up uh, right down around the uh, 123.90 approximately is where it was at. And uh, then moved back up and now uh, is trading higher than it was when we taped the show. But not 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 by much, just a, a couple of points. Um so uh, as far as if you do have stock positions that you wouldn't mind selling at a higher price, we used Amazon only because it recently went through the stock split. So it was feasible to own 100 shares and sell a call against it or put on a collar. 
And as always on Options Playbook Radio, nothing's really meant to be a recommendation. We're just trying to say that there are some strategies that can be done to add protection to your account. So uh, one of the more popular things to do go, it, going into a month where you may be bullish still but nervous is a covered call. And I'd also say that with the collar. One of the things about the collar is I'm a little bit more nervous because I'm using some of the credit from the call option, I mean, usually most of the credit from the call option, to help finance my peer protection, which would be that put option. And I still think there are viable strategies that you can do on your underlying stocks. Uh, it all really comes down to an opportunity cost. If, you, if the market were to run to the upside, you know your risk on the downside. If you do the covered call, the risk is still stock ownership, but you can still sell your stock. You just got to buy the call back first. And on the collar side of things, well, yeah, you own the stock. If it does go down, you can actually close the collar if you would like, sell the put. Buy to close the call. That also works. But when I have a caller position on like that, I'm, I'm actually a little bit more worried about the upside and the opportunity that I may lose if the stock does blow through the strike. And that would be the same concept in the color, covered call. And I'm not able to adjust it and roll to try to avoid assignment. So it really comes down to are you prepared to sell the stock? And if you're not, make sure you have a plan to adjust your position if need be. In Amazon this week, the stock really didn't do much. It actually was a, uh, so far since last week has been a, a fairly good covered call candidate, even, even a collar trade. Now you can say, well, Brian, I put on a collar, I want it to go down. No, that's not true. Um, if you're buying protection, if you're buying insurance, if you're buying a hedge, you're, usually your best case scenario would be is that the underlying stock would go up. That's why you put it on is so that you could stay long that under, underlying stock. I mean, you don't go and buy insurance on your car and then be upset because you didn't drive it into a tree over the six-month period, right? So the con that's the concept of insurance. You have it there just in case, but you kind of hope that you don't use it. That's simple. All right, enough on Amazon. So this week, uh, partly because I am at a conference and I haven't been watching the markets all day long, but... Also because of what I mentioned about September. Let's get a little bearish on the marketplace. So I'm going to do a rinse and repeat strategy. And I didn't. I did one not that long ago. And it, ideally, I would have continued to do this trade over and over. But we're going to look at a butterfly in the SPX. And we're going to get bearish on this butterfly. And here's the thing. The VIX is still up around the 25 level. And butterflies are cheap in the SPX because of this. If the VIX was at 15... This butterfly that I'm going to set up with the same parameters, the same days to expiration, the same width would almost be trading for double what it is now. So since we looked at a paper trade in it, uh, we did have the markets go down leading into that expiration on those option contracts. This, the SPX actually traded through the short strike on the day of expiration, which is the best case scenario you can get. Well, it's not the best case. Best case scenario is that it would stop right at your short strike of your butterfly. Um, that would just be like hitting the lottery type con concept if you could get it to stop right on the strike of a butterfly. But, uh, but one of my best case scenarios, if I'm thinking of a butterfly, is that it would slowly trade down and touch your short strike on the expiration date. That's ideally what you would like to happen. So... Just to keep things simple this week, even though this is a little bit of an advanced trade, we're going to go back to the wheelhouse. Um, I've always talked about doing butterflies and rolling them into short spreads or long spreads or doing long spreads and short spreads and rolling them into butterflies. In this instance, we are taping on a Wednesday. I was surprised that the butterfly, I'm going to give, it, give you the trade right now, but I was surprised that the butterfly was actually trading for under two bucks at the midpoint. Um, thought maybe it would be a little bit higher with only Thursday and Friday for this trade to live in the S&P 500 index. We're going to be trading the weekly options, which means that they do trade all day on Friday and they are on the close on Friday is when the option contracts would expire. And the set price would be the close of the, S of the SPX on Friday, uh, which is two days from today on the 9th. All right, so I did mention that we are using put options. So we're going to be doing a put butterfly. We're going to go 20 points wide, which is the standard formula that I would use. And mainly, I'm going 20 points wide just because I want to keep the cost low. 
an options playbook radio if we're doing a very speculative trade that's not meant to be a recommendation i don't want the overall cost to be that expensive and that's really the the reason why we're going 20 points wide as opposed to 30 points wide and so in this instance a 20 point move in the s p 500 index is still a very strong move over two days um it's very it's a plausible move but it's still a fairly decent move in the spx so the spx doesn't move 20 points every day in and day out eh, recently maybe it has but with that said okay the market right now on the close in the spx is three thousand nine hundred seventy nine dollars and eighty seven cents uh it's up 1.8 percent on the day we are going to buy the September 9th expiration, 39.75 put. Sell two of the September 9th expiration, 39.55 puts. And buy one of the September 9th expiration, 39.35 puts. All right. So we're going to buy a fairly at the money option contract, go down 20 points, sell two of a little bit out of the money option contract. And then buy one of the 39.35 uh, 39, puts, and that's going to be our protection, and that's further out of the money. It's a 20 point wide butterfly, but basically means that you want the stock to fall within that 40 point range minus the net debit that is received. And in this instance, I'm seeing the midpoint right now trade at 190. That's $190 plus commissions to put on that trade for every one by two by one butterfly. So I would do this trade, and if the market did, let's say it went up like it did today, uh, one and one and a half percent or more by the end of the market tomorrow, I would look to adjust the trade. And what my adjustment would be is I would roll this trade into a short put spread. And I would look to sell the most expensive option, which would be the most at the money one, the 39.75 one, that is, if the market went up, and then buy the 39.35 one. So hence, I'm going to be having two short spreads, but the downside is, is that they're 20 points wide. So we're going to add a requirement because our max risk has now increased, but we're doing this into a bullish market. And if we do this trade, our risk starts at the short strike, which is 39.55. So keep that in mind. It would be, I don't want the cheese anymore. Just let me out of the trap. And I would maybe, I would consider doing that roll if the roll was trading for right around $4. Right now, it's much more expensive than that. It's trading for $13. That roll would be if I sold the $39.75 put to close and bought to open the 39.35 put, it would be trading for right around $13 net credit to the account. You say, Brian, well, why don't I want to do it now? Well, I'm hoping for a down market. This, what I'm doing is saying that if the market goes up and that roll starts trading for a lower dollar amount, I don't want it to be lower than what I paid for it, right? Right, right now, $1.90 for that trade. I don't want it to be lower than that. But if I can roll it and I still bring in a $4 net credit, that means I can still make $200 on the trade. To me, it's just saying, I don't want the cheese anymore. Just let me out of the trap. If the market flip-flops again and starts going down hard towards my short put strike, well, then I'm just going to close it out. And if it ever got to my short put strike, I would close it out instantly. I just don't want that risk that I have put on that, on that trade. And that's the way I would trade it. I'd only adjust it once, and that would only happen on Thursday. If it happens on Friday, I'm just going to close it. That's simple. Okay, so let's recap. Looking to do a SPX butterfly. We have two days remaining to the expiration. Uh, we are going to be buying the September 9th 39.75 put, selling two of that same expiration 39.55 puts, and buying one of that expiration, 39.35 puts. We're going to get this done at the midpoint, which is currently a net debit of $1.90 to the account plus commissions. And that would be your max risk on the trade. And we are taping this show. It's Wednesday, September 7th, and the markets are closed. And we're doing it from 
lovely but very hot Orlando, Florida. Thanks for coming, everyone. That's it for this episode of Options Playbook Radio. If you have any any questions that you'd like us to try to address on the show or any comments about the show, please send them directly to me at theoptionsguy at invest.li.com. Thanks for listening. We'll be back at the same time, same place next week. Until then, may all the options you bought finish in the money and all the ones you sold finish out. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.